Hello and welcome to the NBA Minutes to Win It podcast. I'm Begitaly42. He is Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. And there's definitely some some uh, news, a lot of news actually coming out. We originally had heard that uh, Kevin Durant was out and definitely not going to play. Now all of a sudden he went through part of shoot around and it's questionable. So it looks like the Thunder trying once again to make his injuries um, linger for as long as possible as they normally do. But either way, so Russell Westbrook, if Durant plays, goes from borderline must play down to, I mean, I'm not going to say not playable in cash games, but I, there's other options I'd like better. So that's going to be something to keep your eye on. But we're probably not going to find out till game time. So you might want to have your contingency plans just in case because it's certainly not a given that Durant's going to play, but it's not a given he's going to sit. They've got him as questionable slash game time decision now. So that's going to definitely change a lot of things very late. So be at your computer at 645 tonight. Yeah, well, that game's at nine thirty. Well, so that's that's going to be tough. But be on DK way, at nine twenty five then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, either way, I mean, you could. I mean, Durant or uh, Westbrook's a pretty safe play either way when Durant plays. So I mean, he's going to get his, and on that Fanduel price, which is not bumped up like we were talking earlier, Westbrook eleven eleven thousand six hundred on DK now. Um, I mean, you could probably pivot down, and there's late games where you could kind of balance things out if that was the case. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's going to be the biggest thing to keep your eye on. But a um, couple other injury concerns as far as, uh, I guess, point guards. I know the Westbrook one wasn't a point guard, but it's directly related to him. Um, Tyreek Evans he said he was having sharp pains in the knee he got surgery on. He's listed as questionable, but I don't envision a scenario where with sharp pains in his knee he got surgery on, a surgically repaired knee that he's playing tonight. But keep your eye on that because obviously Norris Cole going to get a big bump there, and he's really, really cheap. Um, guys that are out, Alfred Payton is out. Tony Parker is out. George Hill is still sick. It seems like he's questionable for tonight. He's probably more likely to play, but you're not playing him anyway. It just changes things for other guys. Finally, Emmanuel Moutier. Looks like he's going to be back, but he'll be off the bench. Not going to see many minutes, but certainly going to take a little bit of a bump down for guys like Jameer Nelson here. Yeah, Jameer Nelson's been pretty good lately, too. And um, if he kind of sits back down in that 25 range, um, you kind of don't like him at the price he's risen up to lately. No, no, not at all. Um, other options, there's a lot of good tournament options tonight. Guy who's, um, Kimball Walker's been really good. Wasn't great against Golden State, but um, he struggled against Golden State both times this year, actually. So, I mean, and by struggle, I mean 22-7-3. and three. So, not a terrible game, but with his big price tag, it's not a great game. But certainly a good tournament option. Um, John Wall against Cleveland. I know Kyrie Irving's back, but John Wall had a huge game against them before, and Irving is an okay defender, but not a great one. John Wall, at his price, probably a guy that people won't be on a ton, so I think that he's a good guy to throw in tournaments, too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you want to save a little bit from Westbrook to Wall, I mean, that's a nice pivot, um, especially on DK. It's a 2,000 difference who could have similar similar ceilings tonight, especially if Durant comes back. Yeah. Um, one more guy to keep your eye on, and this doesn't seem like he actually has an injury concern for tonight because he came back from the hamstring tweak last night and played 43 minutes, but Deron Williams did play 43 minutes in a double overtime game last night, so maybe we see him be limited. Maybe they sit him out, but it seemed like his hamstring was fine, so um, not an actual concern, but something that we wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, maybe get a, get a day off, but um, I guess they, they seemed sur- supremely confident in him last night, letting him play 43 minutes off that uh, that tweak, so he, he definitely may be all right, though. Yeah, one more guy, Kyle, Ra- Kyle Lowry. Uh, great yeah. great uh, matchup tonight. And, um, I mean, he's been great lately. Um, Twenty uh, Double-digit assists in the last three games, 23 points, 22, 18. Um, last three games there against Cleveland, Chicago, and Charlotte. So, um, you know, a nice matchup for him against the Nets. And that price tag, uh, just 8,300 on DK. So, I think he's a great tournament play. I mean, no one seems to ever talk about him anymore. Yeah, and one more guy nobody ever talks about either, especially if Tyreek Evans is out. Drew Holiday. Finally played 30 minutes um, in his last game, so at his price, it's a mid, it's a upper or a lower mid range price, I guess it is. But he's been fairly consistent. He's shown some upside. I mean, some 30 plus point games in less than 30 minutes. So if Tyreek sits out, they're mentioning maybe the minutes cap is off soon. Maybe he finally gets unleashed. And if Tyreek's out, then that could certainly be perfect perfect scenario for. Maybe you go on Fandle and pair him and Norris Cole for 10K in a, in a tournament, which I know I'll be doing at least once if Tyreek's out. And uh, get, definitely differentiate yourself. There's a lot of point guard options tonight. Yeah, I like that, especially against Dallas, who just played double OT last night. I mean, yeah. and it's another, It's I mean, they haven't defended point guards well either, so. Yeah, because Drawn Williams hasn't, hasn't played good defense, and I don't know if he ever did. 
Um, not, not anytime years, recently. Yeah. Years. <laughs> um, shooting guard options, uh, injury concerns, not a ton of them. Avery Bradley, Brad Beal, both out. Um, I guess you're just in trouble if you have Brad in your name. Those are the only guys that are really the big concerns here. Um, Joe Johnson is a game-time decision, I guess. He's questionable for tonight. Played really well in his last game. Actually, 20 or more real points in two straight, but... The Boston game, 20 real points and 21 fantasy points. So, still not a guy that you love. He's really cheap on DraftKings if you want to throw him in a tournament, I guess, if he goes. But on this big slate, he's not a guy I'll probably be playing at all. No, I can never get him right, so I'll just stop. He can't get himself <laughs> right most of the time either. So, uh, um, top, top tier options, though. You've got Dwayne Wade against the Knicks. Struggled two games ago against Washington, but... Turn that back around, had a nice game against Indiana. Obviously, he's still a big usage guy. His price relative to his big usage is really nice, but he's a guy that you know usually isn't going to play big minutes. He played 38 against Indiana, 37 against Memphis, but most of his games right around 30 points or 30, 30 minutes. So still a guy you don't expect to go out and play 35 plus unless this one's just a shootout till the end. Yeah, I mean, in two games against New York this season, he's only averaged 29 minutes, so um, not playing huge huge minutes for that price. I think um, we both, like Monta Ellis and Victor Oladipo, you know, who have taken over the point guard roles with a couple of injury concerns. So um, I think it's, you're better off going that route. Yeah, I mean, as far as cash games go and some tournaments, you just have to play Victor Oladipo tonight. Um, obviously, George Hill's status a little bit contingent on Monta yeah. Ellis, but he was playing well anyway. So um, another guy who's playing well, I don't like the matchup, and I hate to say it because it's the Spurs, not because I'm a Spurs fan, but because the defense is just so good. But uh, Rodney Hood is a guy who's been playing very, very good recently. Obviously, he's going to have a tough matchup uh, with Danny Green, who's a good defender. But, I mean, the way he's playing, Derek Favors didn't travel with the team. Someone needs to score, and he's certainly stepped up there. So I think maybe a lot of people will be scared off of him because of the matchup. But he's certainly a guy that I'll still be playing some. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, on DraftKings, he's, he's kind of expensive. But on FanDuel, I'll definitely play him because he's 5800 same price as Old Depot, 100 less than Ellis. But... Um, yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, someone's got to score 50 points at least for the Jazz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, if we remember that last Spurs-Jazz game, he might need to do it in the first half because that yeah. game was pretty ugly. But um, Another guy played himself a fine game last night, and we were on him big. Obviously helped the win to double overtime. But Wesley Matthews, he's, a, he's got a decent price still. Facing off against New Orleans team that, as we know, one of, if not the worst defensive team in the entire league. So... Still not a guy with huge upside, but as far as, you know, a filler that you know is just going to have that floor around 20 points, he's not a bad option either. Yeah, I mean, actually, with Chandler Parsons being out, he could slide over to the three. Um, so we could see some more Raymond Felton tonight um, at the two, which they ran a lot of uh, earlier this season when Parsons was on the minutes limit when they were dealing with injuries. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point there. Um, small forward, like we mentioned, Kevin Durant. Now all of a sudden with the troll job, maybe he's going to play. I hope for, not for the Russell Westbrook's sake and not for DFS sake. I just hope that the Thunder don't just force him back into a game when he's not ready. And maybe he is, maybe he's not. I mean, I know it's a toe. It's not. It's part of his foot, I guess. He's always had foot injuries. But that's that's been the biggest downfall for him in recent years is just getting forced back into action. And it drives me nuts because I don't, I don't want to see Kevin Durant's career cut short from just laziness. But either way, if he plays, I mean, he's going to be a really nice tournament option because he's had some success against Memphis this season as well. Um, yeah. And no one's going to be on him if he's coming into a game. He was originally listed as out, and then he shows up. So I'll throw him in one or two there just in case if he does go. But uh, I think if I'm going to pay up, it's going to be Paul George. Still under 9K on Fandle, only 9,100 on DraftKings. Finally shooting the ball well again. And by that, I mean very well. 31, 32, and 32 real points last three games. Didn't shoot great percentage-wise against Miami, but took over that game when he needed to. And this is a game where... Indiana, especially if we've got George Hill, if he's still sick, if he's out. Um, Paul George is still easily the best player on the floor when these two teams face each other, and um, I just expect him to have a huge game again. And if he continues this pace once again after that slow stretch, his price is going to get right back up in your 10K pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like take advantage of it while you can because we saw this at the beginning of the season where he was off to a hot start scoring about 50 fantasy points every night. And, you know, he was right around this price tag and it rose up over 10K and kind of slump back down a little bit. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with there. Um, take advantage of it while you can. Certainly. Um, other options? I mean, Kawhi Leonard's a guy I'll throw in tournaments. It is He hasn't had big upside recently, but um, it is a matchup against Utah that the Spurs should win easily if 
If the game stays close, he can do stuff. But, I mean, I'm talking if I'm making 50 lineups, I'm putting him in one just because he could put up a big stat line. But I, certainly not even close to a cash game play for me tonight. I mean, I, I may not even have that one share of him. Yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, it's not because he's been bad. It's because, I mean, the blowouts have just been brutal on him. Um, I mean, he shot 9 of 12, 8 of 12, 6 of 10 the last three games. So he's been super efficient. Um, the defensive stats that we kind of rely on haven't been there the last few games, which kind of makes him less of a, a cash game play, even with the blowout factors. So um, I think with Paul George being around a similar price, just go with him. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, Danilo Gallinari has been really good um, in his two games since his return, so he's certainly a guy to keep on your radar um, as well. Gordon Hayward, of course, tough matchup. Probably not a guy I'll be playing, even though David, Derek Favors is out. He'd be the guy I'd be more likely to throw in a couple tournaments instead of Kawhi Leonard there. Yeah, definitely with you there, just because he's a bit cheaper and he's going to have to handle that whole offense. Yeah. A um, couple other mid-range options. Jay Crowder's been playing well. Um, Otto Porter's probably not a guy that I'll be playing because he's going to see a bunch of LeBron James, but um, he has, for the most part, played well recently, so I wouldn't blame you if you went that way, but um, I'm, I'm certainly not altering any lineups to get him in there. Yeah, Evan Fournier, uh, questionable tonight, um, so they could be pretty dwindled in the backcourt. Um, we could see some Super Mario um, come in and play some shooting guard, but um, I mean, that backcourt's probably going to be limited. You're probably going to see Oladipo handle all the minutes he can he can take yeah so like you mentioned there that super mario probably not a guy that we're really targeting but he could get some run i guess um evan turner has been okay recently you could consider him but uh, the, the cheap guy that i'll probably be looking at is bojan bogdanovich coming off that double double last time out he's played well recently um 30 20 and 33 fan duel points and just uh, just sitting at 4400 dollars, i don't think he's a bad option at all here yeah, definitely not. And a decent matchup. I think, you know, that's been able to keep games close and they don't have many other options anyway. So I think he's a decent pump play. Yeah, definitely. Um, power forward, not the best position tonight. We've got some some good names at the top, I guess it is. Um, Anthony Davis, of course, gives you a nice high floor. He does have the ceiling. We just haven't seen it much recently. I mean, it hasn't been over 50 Fanduel points in uh, only, actually, in only one of his. Uh, previous 10 games and that was the christmas day game that went to overtime against miami where he scored 63 so i mean he's he's a fine option tonight but i think there's other options i'd rather pay a lot of money for i think cash game chalk once again especially if white side out going to be chris bosh and thad young yeah no i definitely i'm with you there and new york's been pretty bad against power fours lately um they've lost the six most fantasy points per game uh in the last 10 so defending power forwards hasn't been a priority for him lately <laughs> no no not at all and uh other guys that I guess are in play, um, Kevin Love's always a guy that you can consider, but um, more of a cash game play than a, uh, a tournament play. I'm just not going out of my way to do it. Uh, you've got Serge Ibaka had a huge game last time out against Sacramento. Obviously, this is a much different matchup against Memphis, although they haven't been the defensive team they once were. And obviously, Ibaka, his upside almost completely predicated on blocks because he rarely has those big offensive games. But you can certainly uh, give him a look. But I'm really probably only going to play him on this big slate if Kevin Durant doesn't play. Yeah, I'm with you there. Just because he turns into, I guess, the second usage guy uh, on the team, which is kind of pushing it. But, yeah, I mean, he's, def- yeah, he's just more of a, a secondary scorer when Durant's out. Um, and, you know, he was hot from the field last night. But, I mean, me and you could probably be hot from the field playing against Sacramento. Yeah, exactly. We at least get a open looks. I mean, as long <laughs> as we hit the rim each time, we wouldn't embarrass ourselves. So, yeah. Um, Kenneth Fareed played in his last game after getting shipped to the hospital, a stretcher, and all. I mean, I didn't think there was any way he was going to play, and I was one of those people who had Darrell Arthur in cash games until the last minute, and I mean, got by last minute, I mean all night. They got stuck in, he got stuck in there, but um, Kenneth Fareed might be the toughest player in the world right now after after that vertebrae injury, and he played the next day. That's crazy, but uh, he's a guy, I mean, if he's he's still not going to see huge minutes. He's an upper 20s guy, but certainly a guy that I'll throw in some tournaments because he's got monster upside even in that limited playing time. Yeah, definitely, and he's been good against Minnesota this season. He's averaging 14, 12 in three games, uh, shooting 46%, so um, he's got that mid-range price that he can get you 30, 30 uh, fantasy points or a little, maybe a little bit more, so um, he's definitely a viable option, I think. Yeah, um, cheap guys, Tristan Thompson still in play. He's a guy that's been playing right around 30 minutes a game. He's under 5K on FanDuel. He's a decent option. Um, one more guy who 
has gotten minutes but hasn't been great. Frank Kaminsky been playing 25 to 30 minutes a lot of nights recently, but I think on this big slate, he's not a guy I'm going to be reaching down for. Yeah, definitely in agreement there. Uh, we do have some breaking news. Oh, no. Batum, Batum is out tonight. All right, so give yourself some extra Kimball Walker and Jeremy Lamb shares then. Yeah, well, Lamb's game time game time decision, so... Yeah, I mean, it could be looking like it's a ton of Jeremy Lin, a ton of Kemba Walker. Yeah, Marvel I'm seeing Lamb that actually get some more run. Yeah, you're right. I'm seeing doubtful now for Lamb. So, oh, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably going to be Lin, a great matchup. So yeah. they can see 40 minutes. I mean, you're looking at a ton of points. Fortunately for them, the Suns are the worst team in the NBA right now. So uh, yeah. going to be plenty of production. So yeah, that's that's a good call there. All the Kemba usage rate going to be about a thousand percent tonight now. So go ahead and lock him in some extra times. Um, Center, I really like DeAndre Jordan against Portland. Um, he's really the only thing slowing him down recently has been some games that have got out of hand with uh, the Clippers winning big. But um, six straight games, at least 13 rebounds. He's scoring double-digit points. Not getting a lot of peripherals numbers. But, I mean, this matchup, there's no one down low for Portland that's athletic enough to hang with DeAndre Jordan. And with Damian Lillard back, you expect this one to stay competitive. And, I mean, don't be shocked to see him pushing for a 2020 tonight in this matchup. Yeah, definitely, definitely all over DeAndre Jordan. Uh, in five games without Blake Griffin this season, he's averaged 15 and 14 with two blocks, which that's a pretty good floor for him. And I mean, he's a guy who could rival Andre Drummond for a 2020 game. I mean, really. Yeah, and I mean, like you said with Andre Drummond, I mean, two games against Boston, he's averaging 19 and 17, averaging, yeah. and off that 22, 22 last time. So Drummond's certainly always a guy you can consider, um, especially at his big time, uh, big time upside there uh he does have a big price but you you certainly have enough value to be able to fit him if you want to play him tonight yeah um your other options you got carl anthony towns against denver um he's a guy whose minutes have been all over the place this season which been kind of frustrating we've seen gory jang play well at times towns play well at times it's kind of hard to predict their minutes on a night to night basis but um towns in three games against denver this year shooting almost 60 percent averaging 20 and 10 and 42 dk points so Got to imagine in this matchup he has success and probably is able to get himself those you know thirty to thirty five minutes here. Yeah, I think Towns is a nice contrarian move tonight because I think people are going to be looking at Jordan uh, and Drummond, but um, yeah, I mean Towns definitely definitely consistent when he gets his minutes. Yeah, and uh, Gorgie Jang guy you could put, throw in the tournaments because he's kind of cheap, but his price starting to get a little bit higher than I like. And Nikola Pekovic, they said it's possible that he plays tonight. He's certainly oh. not guy a guy you're playing, but he's going to take some minutes away down low so that's uh that's a situation i'm avoiding it's carl anthony towns or nobody down low for me there yeah uh well saza pachulia well I, I meant for for minutes oh gotcha oh gotcha but... yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, but saza, sorry. your boy yeah i mean he's been killing it i yeah. mean you can't get away from him and especially in this matchup against new orleans um we just played a couple games ago and posted 36 DraftKings points so i mean he's been doing that consistently over the last six seven games of 30 plus dk points so still six thousand uh, dollars against new orleans you can pair him up with almost anyone and, i mean if you want to go two centers i mean saza is a good choice to pair up with someone yeah and then nights like this especially with those expensive options he's a nice swerve um yeah. jeff with these guy you could consider since uh Derek favors is obviously not gonna be a surprise uh surprise non-scratch tonight because he didn't even travel with the team but yeah. um jeff with his price it is a tough matchup but he's played well you don't imagine he's going to necessarily keep up his block numbers against the Spurs, but if he can go for 10 and 10, he could be an okay cheap option for you there. Um, outside of that, really nobody down there for cheap that I'm looking at. Unless you want your ultimate deep sleeper guy that put up 34 FanDuel points in 17 minutes last night, JaVale McGee. And the only reason would be because Zaza Pachulia is getting up there in years. It did play 40 minutes last night. JaVale McGee played about one total minute in the two overtimes. Don't you ever play him in your cash games, and it, don't play him if you have one or even five or even ten GPP lines. But if you got 25 or more or something like that, I'm going to throw him in one, see if he can get 20 minutes, and certainly not going to get two point fantasy points a minute. But this is a pretty good matchup, though, against the New Orleans team that's terrible against the centers. Yeah, 3,100. I mean, he's pretty much bare minimum on both sides. Yeah. So, I mean, great matchup for him. And he, defensively, he's... Solid, so he'll definitely end up with a couple blocks, a couple steals. So, um, I mean, hopefully you can get that double double bonus. But I think we are asking a lot. But we for are. that price tag, I mean, I don't mind it. Yeah, the one super deep sleeper, and we when we say super deep, that means 
the average person should never be playing him unless you're rolling out a ton of lineups. So um, either way, that'll wrap things up here for us for today. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out the rest of our great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.